1982, Carnegie Mellon University students Mike Kazar, David Nichols, John Zarney, and Ivor Durham installed micro switches into this Coke machine. The switches were hooked up to a PDP-10 computer, connecting the Coke machine to the internet. The machine allowed anyone on a computer connected to the internet to know how many sodas were in the machine and whether or not they were cold. And this was the origin of the Internet of Things. But first thing, what is the essence of a computer? What does one do? Put simply, a computer inputs, stores, processes, and outputs data. And with that in mind, as we talk about the future of computing, we need to expand our image of what computers are. You see, computers transcend devices with visual interfaces like smartphones and tablets. Computers are seeping into the fabric of everyday life little by little. And then slowly, over time, the digital and physical worlds will be woven tightly. This idea is summed up by related terms such as ubiquitous and pervasive computing along with the Internet of Things. It's impossible to know exactly what this will look like 30 years from now, but the idea behind this assumption is chillingly and perhaps poorly illustrated at the end of the Matrix revolutions. Neo cautiously walks through the dark, metallic, dispirited corridor. Despite being completely blind, he can vividly sense the data signatures radiating throughout Machine City, a city that is characteristically one big computer. Take a look around. You will see computers. The obvious examples are the plethora of devices and gadgets identified as smart. TVs, refrigerators, speakers, thermostats, light bulbs, grills, and many more. The list continues to grow. But today, there are hidden computers at work embedded behind the scenes of everyday life. The modern car abounds with computers. Computers that monitor and adjust the engine to maintain low emissions. Computers that process data from a multitude of sensors. Computers to assist with the braking system to control airbags, cruise control, and many other features. We will continue to see computers play an increasing role in the physical world around us. And along with the implementation of artificial intelligence, a fantastic alchemy of emerging technology will unfold around us. The acceleration of the Internet of Things and AI advancement have come during an uncertain time in the microchip industry. We have reached a time where microchips will stop improving at an exponential rate, a rate of improvement known as Moore's Law. Now that Moore's Law has ended, microchips will still improve, but not at an exponential rate like it has over the past 50 years. So how will this affect the advancements leading towards ubiquitous computing, the Internet of Things, and AI? There are researchers all over the world trying to discover breakthroughs that will fill the void left behind by the end of Moore's Law. And all of the research being done out there is too numerous to cover today. But we will zero in on one movement and two examples of research happening forthwith, starting with the immense and flourishing cloud computing movement. With cloud computing, end-user computers will continue to become more powerful despite the end of Moore's Law. In other words, the end of Moore's Law will be disguised by cloud computing, especially for mid to large sized businesses. You see, the performance of standalone computers completely rely on the capabilities of their microchips. But with the continued implementation of cloud computing, the performance of computers will continue to become more powerful without upgrading hardware. Cloud computing is simply accessing an agglomeration of computing resources over the internet. 
utilizing vast amounts of computing power. Additionally, as you need more resources, you can scale up the computer power accessed instantly. And as you stop using resources, they're released back to the cloud ready to compute again. And because of this, businesses have been upgrading their computers less frequently as their computing needs shift to the cloud more and more. As you watch this video on YouTube, or when you scroll through your home feed on Facebook, or even complete a Google search, you are using processing power from the cloud. An example I use a lot is the website Canva, where I create all of my thumbnails right online, without having to install the software on my computer. Cloud computing is a movement that will continue to grow and serve our computing and storage requirements through obscure cloud servers in places unknown throughout the world. The global market for cloud computing is expected to grow over $400 billion by 2020. All right, now let's talk about two examples of research happening today. The first study was done by MIT and two scientific institutions out of Germany, and it involves improving data storage and random access memory or RAM. If this technology is refined, improved, and materialized, it could overcome the limits behind Moore's law. Researchers developed a system that manipulates virtual particles called skirmions. Skirmions are little whirlpools of magnetism controlled between two films of metal using an electric field. The virtual particles will be used to store data, and what makes the potential so great is that the data can be stored in a very small space, possibly only a few atoms thick. Not only can skirmions be used to store data, it can potentially be used for random access memory computation. But the main challenge is finding a practical way to read the data once it's stored. The only way to read the data right now is by X-ray magnetic spectroscopy equipment, which is too complex and expensive. Researchers are currently working on a way to add another layer of metal in order to detect the difference in the presence of skirmions on the adjacent layer. All right, and the second example comes from IBM, who wants to change the architecture of computers altogether. The basic architecture of computers today has been used since the 1940s, called the von Neumann architecture, where there is a physical separation between the memory and processing functions. And because of this, data has to travel between storage and computation, and this slows down processes. The researchers at IBM instead aims for an all-in-one approach called in-memory computing or computational memory. And IBM's particular device is made out of germanium antimony telluride alloy. When the alloy is heated by an electric current, the atomic formation changes from a disordered shape to an ordered or crystalline shape. This technology will use the physical properties of the memory device to serve as both storage and processing functions. And the researchers believe that this technology will lead to a 200 time improvement over current computer architecture. So what does today's journey teach us about the future of computing? We learn that the end of Moore's law is less of a speed bump and more of a catalyst for a new era of ingenuity. And we learn that in the next few years, after we squeeze every last drop of processing power from silicon-based microchips, cloud computing will continue to bridge the void that the end of Moore's law leaves behind. And we learn that MIT's research behind skirmions and IBM's pursuit of computational memory represents the inevitable shift from classical computing. These two representations are just a few of the many amazing technologies being developed. There's quantum computing, graphene-based transistors, spintronics, optical computing, and the list goes on. So having started with the simple Coke machine back in 1982, our eventual destination is the fusion of the digital and physical worlds but how we get there is not so clear. 
And what I've learned is that it's impossible to cover the breadth of what the future of computing is in a single video. Because the future of computing is a vast digital and quantum tide gradually invading the shore of the physical world. All right, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neoscribe and see you on our next journey. Professor of English at St. Mary's College of Maryland, Dr. Jennifer Cognard Black, teaches that sometimes your essay will steer you on a path you did not plan on taking. You see, I totally went into making this video with the plan on covering quantum computing. But I came across an article from the World Economic Forum which featured insights from Dr. Justine Castle out of Carnegie Mellon University. Her view of the future of computing blew me away and I realized that it was going to be impossible to cover all of it in the depth that I like to explore. So I decided to take quantum computing out of this video and save it for another one. In any event, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Jay Pierce, Christian Grau, and Jacob Banal for being my first patrons. Thank you so much for helping this channel become the best it can be. And if you want to help me continue to make videos and help the content improve, you can visit my Patreon page in the description below. You can expect four videos a month from me to give you an idea of what you'll be committing to. You can pledge as little as a dollar a video. Every little bit helps. Again, thank you so much and see you on the next journey.